Hello, welcome to Creative Panoply on Savvy Writers TV. I am Paula Kimi. So, like I told you guys in our first edition, we won't be bringing just writers. We would also be bringing other creatives from different fields. And today we have a professional editor with us. Yes. So we'll be discussing the topic self-editing checklist for writers. Those are the things you need to look out for when editing after writing. Because as writers, we all know editing is an important part of the writing process. After writing your first draft, before you get to your final draft, you have to critically take a look at your writing piece. You need to prune out and remove unwanted ideas, sentences, grammar errors, and all of that. But of course, doing this does not mean you're a professional editor because after your final draft, there's still a lot of work to be done and that's where a professional editor comes in. So enough of the talking, guys. Like you know how we'll be doing the talking a lot today. I have with me a professional editor who will be shedding more light on the topic self-editing checklist for writers. Yes, the things you need to look out for when editing after writing. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back. So I have with me on the show, a guest, like I told you, is a professional editor, but I won't be doing the introduction for him. He'll be introducing himself to us. So over to you. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Obina. I am a professional editor and writer. For well, years, yeah, writers, I work with the policy control department to edit manuscripts and every form of writing there is. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Is that your professional editor and a writer? So does that come side by side? Like, must you be a writer before you become a... Oh, no, you don't have to be a writer before you become an editor. You just need to know the basic principles. You need to get your training. Okay. Yeah. And then if you're good to go, then you're good to go. Okay. So how long have you been editing? Yeah, I've been editing for like three years. Three for years. the past so three years. How long yeah. have you been well, writing? I've been writing much longer than that. So, uh, <laughs> So you yeah. started your career as a writer, exactly. then you jumped into editing, right? Yes, I did. Okay, so as a professional editor, you've witnessed a lot of lots of manuscripts that have gone through your decks, different genres, fiction, non-fiction articles, or from different fields. So what are the common errors or the common mistakes that writers often make? Things you see repeatedly on, I don't want to use daily basis, on, let's just say repeatedly. Okay, so um, we have basically different kinds of writing. There is fiction, there is non-fiction. Okay. And in non-fiction, there are different kinds of areas writers make a lot. Okay. We have the basic ones. It's actually the most basic ones that we see repeatedly. Oh. Like the punctuations, the grammar errors, the spelling errors, the fact checking, all these kind of basic things. Sometimes writers make errors like um, maybe they take the facts or a statistic and it's wrong or it's outdated, you know, things like that pop up a lot in articles. And in fiction, we see things like dialogue tags, telling instead oh, of showing, you know, things like that, character acts, the endings are usually, sometimes there are plot holes that they forget to resolve towards the ending. And so through developmental editing, through line editing, we tend to, we have to go through that and, you know, take care of these problems. Uh, sorry, I, I just want to point out something. You talked about dialogue tag. Yeah. So I know dialogue tags, people use it in writing. So are you saying it's not good to use dialogue oh, tags or you should good. completely eliminate it from writing? It's very good to use dialogue tags. Okay. But there's a way you use dialogue tags. Okay. So, that. yeah, like um, the bad way of using dialogue tags is using excessive verbs. Instead of saying, for like Amy said, someone will be like, Flakemi, an crazy verb like shouted, go forward, flatemi, road. You know, people use a lot of crazy <laughs> verbs instead of just sticking to said. And then punctuations, even in dialogue tags, yeah, there's a way you punctuate dialogue tags and dialogues. And yeah, it's occurs a lot that people get that wrong quite frequently. And it's actually very common. These are things that we look out for, yeah. Okay, dialogue tags, dialogue tags, okay. So as, as a writer, what are the criteria I look out for if I, after writing, 
not necessarily getting to my final draft now. So after writing my first draft, for instance, and I'm going through my work again. So what are the things I need to look out for to ease the work of the editor? Yes. So in, in non-fiction, say an article or a business writing, okay. you want to look at the content. You want to ask yourself, what's the goal of writing this? Now, every point that I've made in this content, is it, um, is it relevant okay. to the goal of the piece of writing? Is it worthwhile? Well? Is it what the time of the reader reading this information? Is it unique? Have you repeated it somewhere else before? Okay. If you're repeating it again, why are you repeating it? Is it for emphasis or is it just a loose repetition? So you want to ask yourself these questions and look through your manuscripts and try to fix these structural problems. You have to make sure that your points flow accordingly. Okay. So if you're okay. saying something and you're moving to the next point, you have to make sure there's a flow and not just like a sudden switch. Okay. And you also have to look at your style of writing. How are you writing it? Is it clear? Is it straight to the point? Is the, are there so many long sentences? You know, long sentences are not so bad every time, but it's best to, you know, keep it short, keep it straight to the point. Yeah. And you also want to look at your punctuations, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this one you keep emphasizing punctuation. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's actually something writers tend to overlook a lot, wow. but it's so important. Trigger. Yeah, it, and it's too important. And I understand that it's easy to miss them out. Well, that's why after you're done doing your best, you move it over to the editor to take care of the rest. Okay, so you, you actually admit that writers can be 100% right on their work, so they still need to move it over to you guys? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's only so much you can do for yourself. You are the writer, so, you're too, so there's what they call over-familiarity with your piece of writing. So when you're too familiar with your writing, there's... You can't do so. You need someone else to help you look through it. You need another eyes okay. to, yeah, help you look through a lot of things that you might have mixed, especially in fiction. In fiction, it's so easy to make mistakes with your plots. Sometimes you may write a story and you think your plot makes total sense. You'll be so <laughs> proud of it. But then, <laughs> but then you need someone else to help you, uh, yeah, check if it really makes sense. Okay, so there's something about editors, like, it's like, you guys are not reading, just reading a work like, like you have a knife that you just slide. Like hmm. work. And so there's this fear of, okay, maybe you, you're submitting a work that is, uh, let's say, a thousand work. That's the word count now. And you're getting it back from the editor, you're seeing like, let's say 700, 600, and you're like, yeah. what did I do wrong? <laughs> So why, why, why do you, like, I'm, 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 I'm sure I'm talking on behalf of writers. Why do you guys do that? Like, why? Yeah, you, you, you have to be economical with your words. Oh. Because you have to okay. consider that people are going to read it. Readers are going to read your work. And it takes, reading is actually stressful. It takes brain power to read a work. Okay. So you have to understand that if you're writing a lot of words, it's going to take the reader more time to read it. People prefer to read things that are more concise, more straightforward. So instead of going around the bush, it's always better to go direct. So that's why we tend to cut things down. We tend to make it more, you know, more consumable, easily consumable. Okay, so yeah. where, where do you draw the line of not interfering in the writer's style? Yeah. Like, so you, you want to get the readers to understand what the writer is saying. At the same time, you don't want to cut out the writer's votes. Yes, let me use that. Yeah, we, we consider the audience. Who is the audience? If the audience is, um, say, business-oriented people, then they usually prefer things that are more straight to the point. Okay. But if it's, if it's fiction, and I know that the audience likes to relax and just read something. Right. So maybe in that situation, maybe I won't cut out so much. Okay. So it depends. I also have to put yourself in the shoes of the readers. Okay. Put yourself in the shoes of the writer too. What's the writer trying to achieve with this? So which comes first, the reader or the writer? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Okay, so you actually don't want to give us... So now, now, just tell us sincerely. When you pick up a manuscript, yeah. you're editing, the first thing you're thinking of is, who is writing this or who is reading this? Yeah, well, obviously, before you start editing, you would have had a conversation with the writer. Yeah. So... Obvious, you understand the writer first. So you get what the writer wants to do, what the writer wants to achieve. Yeah. After you've gotten that, the writer has to move on site. 
Okay. Now you have to consider the reader. Okay, how would the reader perceive this now? How would the reader accept this piece of writing? You okay. get. It. So I'm I'm around about writing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm writing for instance, and I have I've done my work. I have my manuscript ready. I've gone through it. I've edited it on my part, but I still need to give it out to a professional editor. So as a writer, how would I determine the type of editing I need at a point? Like, do I really need a thorough editing or maybe a proofreading or like just a light glance of my work? So how do I determine that? Okay, so there, there are several types of editing. There's okay. developmental, developmental, some people call it structural. Okay. So I feel like that's always the first point. The structure edit is the first point. Now from a fiction, like if you have written fiction and you want to get it edited, it's always necessary to get developmental editing. You need um, a developmental editor to look through your story and check your plot and stuff and characters and stuff. But if you want to skip the developmental editing, okay. if you don't want to get the developmental editor, then there are other things you can do. You could get alpha readers, beta readers, critic partners, people who look, you don't pay them. They just help you look through your work, although they are very good writers. And basically they know what, um, what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So they help you look through this and get the, um, help you with the editing of the plots, tells you, tell you what's not working and what's working. And after that is done, then you can now switch to line editing. So line editing is the editing that takes care of your narration. This okay. care of how you're writing it is are you does the writing flow well is it redeeming or is it just rushing like tap water are you <laughs> taking care to ensure that your reader is enjoying what you're writing okay so you do need a line editor i feel like a lot of people tend to skip the line editing because they think that their writing is already good enough oh, okay but yeah i get that your writing is good enough for you but what about your reader so that's where the editor comes in. The editor takes the shoes of the reader and tries to edit it yeah, from the reader's standpoint. So you have to get your line editing first. After editing so your line editing. Sorry to, sorry to cut you. You can yeah. skip. So you're saying you can skip the structural editing in some cases. Yeah, I'm saying it's optional if you take care of it by getting alpha readers and beta readers. Okay, so there's an option if you don't want to go for structural editing. Yeah, I feel like there is. Okay, okay. So you yeah. Can so after escaping that part, <laughs> and then you move to your line editing, you take care of that before you finally get to proofreading. Okay. Yeah. So proofreading is the final stage. Yeah. So that means as a reader, no, as a writer, sorry. So if I'm coming to you, I'm bringing in my manuscript, I'm giving it to you, and I tell you, okay, I need your services as a proofreader. What are you expecting to see in such manuscripts? Okay. If you tell me that you want proofreading done, I will look through your manuscripts and I will be expecting to see that it's already been edited. By you or no, by not another by editor? Me. An editor could edit it. Not necessarily by so me. Is that not double work? Like, why would, I, why would I give it to another editor and still bring it over to another editor when one editor can actually do a good job? No, one, I don't, I don't think someone who does line editing should also do the proofreading for the same work. I oh. think, yeah, I think you have to give it to different editors. I feel like one editor should do the line editing. And when it's done, it gives it to another editor to do the proofreading. Because the, the editor who did the line editing now has the same problem as the writer. For example, oh. you've written your work and you're so familiar with it. So you cannot proofread it by yourself. You have to give it to someone to help you and edit it. And the line editor too has a problem because he has already done the line editing. Okay. So now there's that familiarity too. Oh. Yeah. So get the work done properly. He now has to give it to the proofreader. So oh. if I'm the proofreader in this scenario and the work is coming to me, I'm going to read through it. With a fresh eye. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to read through it. And I'm going to check if the line editing has been done very well. Yeah. Before I start the proofreading because I can't proofread a work that isn't properly written. Okay, so when you mean line editing, like, can you narrow it down? What are the things you need to see? Okay, is it um, punctuations, um, coherence, or logical flow of ideas? Can you pinpoint those things you, you want to see as a proofreader 
that the line editor should have done? Yeah, with line editing, it's basically about the more about the narration. Although the punctuations and grammar and all those things are also there. Like if I'm doing line editing, definitely I would be correcting punctuations as I go. But that's not my main focus. My main focus is the style of writing. How is it written? Is it written well enough? Does it please the reader? Is the prose lucid enough? Is it clear? You know, these things like you see some book and the first line just scares you off <laughs> because it's just so <laughs> not good enough. I mean, that's just terrible. So when the first line scares you off, you know that this work hasn't been edited properly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying as a writer, you need to pass your book through different editors. Yes, I think it's necessary. Yeah, writers tend to think that once they are done writing that, you know, they can just proofread it or proofread it themselves and then just go and wow, publish. That's, that's, that's true. Though. Yeah, but we all need people to lean on. So yeah, we need to... <laughs> <laughs> we need Sorry, to yeah, like, as you just said, that, like, a song came to my head. I, yeah. I probably know you. I, I think you know the song. I was thinking of the song too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as, as writers, we need, we need that. So that, that's the mistake we often make. We don't realize that we need editors. We tend to want to do everything ourselves. So yeah. Like I've written my work, I've edited it, I've gone through it, which is not right. So let me just let me just do this quickly. If you want to outsource editors, you need editors for your work. Yes, we do that at Cyberwriters. Cyberwriters is a content writing organization where we offer you value. We offer you value. And we save you time, stress, and money. Yes, we save you time, stress, and money. So if you need to outsource editors, you need to outsource writers, we are your plug. So, so thank you so much for that, Obina. Okay. So um, before we wrap up the show, can you just give your words, like one advice to writers out there? What are the things you, you just generalize it, like just wrap it up? into one sentence what should they look out for what are the things you want them to always check to always do before sending in their work to editors okay so yeah do yourself editing that's it oh. yeah you just have to do yourself editing yourself before you ship it over to the editor so that the editor doesn't do too much work just because you wrote a book Okay, so if they want to improve their writing, for instance, if they are not really good with editing and yeah. they tend to skip a lot of things, what should they do? Yeah, I'm going to give you a cliche advice on this one. It's cliche because it's true. You have to read a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, read really good read. books, read bad books too, and understand why they are bad. So you oh. know, yeah. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So you I know what you can do better. Stephen King? I can't remember who said that, actually. I don't I know. think it's... It's a quote from someone. Like, I'm not sure. Yeah. So read good books, read bad books, read good books to know what they did or what the writers did, the authors did to actually make that book good. And for the bad books, you also have to read it to know what went wrong so you won't repeat the same mistake. Yeah, Thank exactly. you so much. So one last thing, like we always do, tell us something, something, just one thing that people don't know about you. <laughs> Um, let's see. Don't tell us your favorite food or your favorite <laughs> color. No, that's not accepted. Okay, I actually, I actually draw. I love oh, drawing. Yeah. An artist. Yeah, I am something of an artist. Oh, wow. <laughs> not so, if I'm so good, but ever since I was a child, before I started writing, I was an artist. Yeah. I used to draw comics and stuff. Then I started drawing people and yeah, but I haven't done that in a while. I've been so busy with, wow. you know, stuff. That's, that's interesting. You're an yeah. Artist. Well, I, I wouldn't have asked you to draw me. I, I was actually open. I would get a portrait for that. <laughs> so thank you so much. Wow, you're an artist. So why did you leave that field? Like, yeah, well, why? Okay, like, I actually love stories. So I actually started drawing because I wanted to draw comics. As a child, okay. draw comics on my notebooks to tell stories. Oh, oh, oh. But yeah, eventually I had to move from drawing comics to writing, writing. the stories. <laughs> to <laughs> editing. Oh, so yeah. you're the final stage. Yeah drawing writing editing that's interesting yeah. thank you so you're still in the creative space so that means you're a good storyteller a good artist and definitely an excellent editor 
I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for that, Obina. Thank you thank for you. coming on the show. So guys, we've heard all he said about editing. As writers, why we need to edit, it's very important. And we heard some of the tips and the things you need to do before sending your work out to your editor. You don't want to give your editor a headache. Like, don't give them a headache. Let them edit your work with ease and without stress. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you've not subscribed to this channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button. You should also turn on your notifications. That's the bell icon. Turn on your notifications to get more content as we upload. Till next time we come your way, guys, on Creative Canopy. I'm still for me. See you in the next video. Bye.